Hello, this is Steve, and you're watching Smoking Cardboard. I had a little bit of a absence last week. I didn't make a video, which I always try to make one. Some of that is uh, having to do with... I went to uh, see a doctor last week about my tongue. Since it wasn't healing, that's where the dentist referred me. And uh, they gave me some... She gave me some uh, steroids, cream stuff to put on my tongue. And I'm not smoking, trying to let that stuff do its magic. So hopefully everything's feeling good soon. So, uh, But, man, once you stop take a little break from making videos it's kind of like it'd be really easy to get out of it for sure I can understand uh, why some people wouldn't it's always kind of been in my mind where I'll kind of plot out another time when I'm gonna make a video and uh, I try to get it done and then um, yeah it's just been roll to the next one I'll worry about what I'm gonna talk about <laughs> later but um, yeah it was a little bit harder to motivate myself to do in a video when I'm not even smoking anything so there's a couple things that I want to go over one uh, is that doctor's appointment that doctor's appointment was super weird um, had an intern lady do half of the appointment and then uh, the doctor lady came in and you know they're checking out my tongue but they had asked really simple questions where I didn't know what they were implied they kept asking whether or not I drink water I'm mean, like yeah I drink water I mean <laughs> yeah but they didn't follow it up after I said yes so that was always, that was confusing. Um, I didn't know if drinking water was a problem or a good thing. <laughs> I'm assuming they wanted me to drink water. Uh, they were quite confused why a good person like myself would smoke a pipe, but uh, it, there was nothing I was going to say to dissuade them that uh, pipe smoking was not a stupid decision and uh, I can understand that they um, deal with a lot of bad stuff that deals with the mouth nose you know throw all this stuff that deals with tobacco so I can to say that they're not biased is uh, is an understatement but they certainly care for me so can't blame them there anyway I also got a kick at the end where she was like, I can prescribe you something for the nicotine so you can stop. And it's like, I can stop smoking a pipe whenever I want. And I was like, I don't even smoke it every day. So she did not believe that. And she was like, uh, I can subscribe. subscribe. <laughs> yeah. And I was like, no, I don't need that. Anyway, that was my doctor's appointment. So now I'm taking some medication. Things are better. Sensitivity went away right away some sensitivity like to spicy or um yeah mostly that kind of stuff like uh toothpaste you know that sort of stuff that i have uh but there's still like um some spots that are seem uh tender uh they're coming less tender um so i'm just going to do what they said the whole two weeks take this and then kind of report back and we'll see from there um, I think it will hopefully be good it'll allow me to kind of catch up and hopefully if I run into the situation again in the future I can just use this and help me so we'll see anyway boring update cool update is uh, I had sent Paladin Piper some stuff and I guess in the true paladin form he thought it was uh, time to reciprocate such uh, 
love in the form of a big box. This thing uh, says four pounds. I don't know if it really is, but that's like uh, a small baby. And I gotta say, this is most definitely too much, Paladin. If you haven't checked out Paladin's sh channel, you should definitely, he does a lot of cool reviews uh, to a lot of different blends. So if you like reviews, definitely should be one you have on your radar. Using Cliff Higgins knife that he gave me. It's super nice. All right, what do we got? It's from Smoking Pipes. Uh-oh. I have the camera flipped around, so if you can't see any of this stuff, sorry. All right, so we got the Semwa. The La Volette, the XXL cut, Semwa. I have not had this super awesome. This is a lot of tobacco, because this is like dried, so it's like, I don't know whatever it is, three and a half ounces, but it's like got no moisture at all. So it's like a bunch of tobacco. And it's uh, it's grown and processed by this guy, a special thing. I've heard really good things about it. Really excited to try this thing so much. I don't know why I have never bought that stuff because I'm really good at buying tobacco. Oh my gosh, this is too much. All right, what do we got here? Ah, the fourth generation 1931. This is a... A flake uh, Virginia Burley, I think. I have uh, not tried this, but I do have some. August 2020, so coming up on a, a year. Super awesome. This is these are like the big can. There's like a smaller can of this you could have gotten, but <laughs> awesome. All right, what else we got in here? This is a lot. Whoa! I guess there's some Samuel Gawith, some Grouse Moor. So this is kind of like a Lakeland tobacco, uh, like a shag cut, I believe. Very cool. I like Lakeland, so all good there. Ooh, Samuel guy with Navy Flake. I have had this one before. They said that this, yeah, it has Latakia, Latakia. And uh, I had some of this i don't know if it was just a tin before but i didn't really pick it up but i gotta say when you get pressed latakia and uh virginia's i don't really pick up latakia the same like it tastes completely different to me i don't know if other people have had that so very cool i do not have any of this uh, but i have had it before and it's very delicious my goodness it doesn't end there. That would have been like more than enough. Ooh, two friends, bed and breakfast. What is this? Red and bright yellow Virginias are combined with a fine oriental leaf tossed Cavendish and just a bit of, uh, my, my notes are blown away. It's a little breezy. Uh, sorry. Just a bit of rich Latakia, Latakia. Hmm, hmm. Virginia's Oriental Cavendish, maybe the Cavendish is Burley, and Latakia. Not had it. I have one, two friends one, so I know I've heard of it. Uh, wow, real fresh. 305.21. So, like last month. Two friends heritage. No way. So, this one. If you can see that I'm too close um, I have an old tin so this will be really cool like I I bought uh, this heritage there was a brick and mortar that had some tins they had three or four that da Vinci was one uh, Briar Fox and some of these but they were all from like 2012 or 2013 or something so they were pretty old so it'll be really cool to have one so I can open that other one and have another one super cool and this one is a Virginia uh, 
with unflavored black cavendish and a little bit of burley. So very cool, very much up my alley. <clears throat> oh my gosh, and there's more. I mean, it did say four pounds on the box thing. Hey, a straight Virginia, the Hamburg Vermaster. I have not had this. I did uh, get some of this myself to stash away, but I'll definitely have to break into one of these. Uh, it's so it's disappointing. You can't tell how old these tins are. And Da Vinci. Very cool. I gave uh, a tin of this away to uh, um, Boca de Boyden, and I hadn't tried it myself, so very cool. I think this one has a little bit of flavoring on it, like type thing, but I can't, I can't remember. And finally, whoa. Oh, Peter Heinrich's Special Curly. I have definitely looked at getting this, but I haven't. That's really awesome. I think this is kind of like one of those coin cut tobaccos of Virginia Burleys. It doesn't say anything on here, but oh, maybe on the bottom. Uh, so Virginia spun cut. Um, just Virginia is all it says. Interesting. I thought maybe there was some Burley or something in there, or Kentucky or something. Kind of like uh, the Mac Baron twists type things they have but very cool I'm really looking forward to that and these cans you know you can't really store can't store them for ever in these little paint cans I've actually have those mylar bags and I'll stick the tobacco in the mylar bag and then just put them back into the paint can if I'm gonna let it just sit for a while because then you still have the can I mean there's like a connection to the container rather than just putting it in a jar. It just looks cool. Even if it gets dried out a little bit, <laughs> you got to have that connection. But uh, I mean, oh my goodness, too much, too much tobacco. Uh, super generous. I appreciate all of it and I look forward to trying all of it. Excellent, excellent picks. I will definitely, uh, I will definitely, um, uh, enjoy those so thank you thank you so much again check out paladin piper uh i was gonna do a vr this video is probably way too long i'm just kind of rambling i'm sorry about that i'm sorry if this is a really boring video <laughs> uh, i'm off i'm off my rocker um Four-Eyed Piper has a giveaway for 900 subs, which, you know, whenever you do uh, a cool gaw, you're going to get subs, you know, other people will do responses and they see it and chain reaction. So I'm sure he's like, by the end of this, going to be real close to 1,000. Um, so congrats on the 900 and a future 1,000 subs. Um, I feel like... Uh, he kind of stopped making videos right when I started. Um, and uh, the Briar Report, he had like a channel on there and it seemed like a cool guy, but then life happened, you know, and he stopped making, but he's back and he's making great content. So if you haven't checked him out, um, check out Far Eyed Piper, but uh, he's gonna have a lot of videos out there. He just kind of took a break. Um, seems like, someone I get along well with. Uh, he asked um, for his giveaway, what are you hunting for? He kind of wanted to know what you're after. And to be honest, um, I have been a uh, tobacco acquiring machine uh, for the last two years um, that I got into this hobby. I think, uh, you know, I bit the the Oh no, tobacco's now is going to be here or ex as accessible as it is right now. Uh, I need to get this stuff. And part of me was kind of like, well, I think I'd be able to get it through retailers. You know, I'm more, 
I'm more of the thought that the online sales will probably go away. So I kind of wanted to just buy lots of different stuff that I was interested in. But what you are interested in with tobacco constantly changes, you know, uh, when you first start. Um, I didn't really go down the aromatic rabbit hole much. I mean, the first two tobaccos I bought were aromatic and I did buy another uh, one. The autumn evening, um, I thought I had a really bad experience as an amateur and I thought I just threw it away or burned it or whatever but I actually found it and I'm rehydrating it so I am gonna give that tobacco a second shot but I kind of veered away from the aromatics not really my thing I've got I've been gifted samples which kind of like confirm that um, <clears throat> so most of it's been kind of trying to figure out which tobaccos I did like um, Kentucky was I got bold Kentucky right away which kind of steered me away from that and then I kind of um, you know, went more into Virginia's and English's, but then I really did like Kentucky, uh, just maybe not bold <laughs> Kentucky for my first Kentucky. Um, so then the Virginia Kentuckys and then more the Burleys and being like, oh, maybe I do really like Burleys. So I'm kind of all over the board. I like English's, I like um, Virginia's, I like Virginia Periques, I like Virginia Burleys, and I like Burleys. Uh, not all Burleys and not all any one of those categories, but I like a lot of them in those. But I think most of the time I'm going to be grabbing something that is primarily Virginia, you know, whether it's uh, Virginia Burley, Virginia, or Virginia Perique. Um, there are a couple burly blends like I just had in my last video where I was kind of raving about the um, the Q, what is it, the per Perfection Plug Burly or whatever it was um, from Yulis. Um, I really like that. But then I have other burlies where all I get is harshness. I'm not getting the flavors. I'm just kind of getting like raw, like, ah, this is tough. Um, so... I gotta figure out some of that. Um, if that's just poor smoking skills or sensitive mouth or what's going on with that, but uh, very cool. Um, so I'm to the point where I've kind of honed in on some of the blends. I'm trying to get, I have the, the lot of different types of tobaccos to smoke. Um, so some of it is taking my time to get through them and I'm trying not to rush through it trying them i'm kind of opening something and trying to uh, smoke most of it <laughs> if it's a 50 gram tin i want to kind of just leave it in the tin and smoke that tin of that tobacco um as such it's just kind of made me realize like i got a lot i got plenty of tobacco so i'm really trying to cool the jets of buying tobacco which isn't working I'm still buying stuff, but I think I'm trying to be much more, um, less reactive and more like intentional with that. So we'll see. Uh, I was trying to avoid that whole McFerrin Latakia roll, but I ended up buying some because you guys all said it was amazing and uh, it looked like something I would like. And then... I don't know I don't know why I bought it and um, there's just some tins you know of stuff that I just kind of want to get but it's kind of like some of that stuff it's like well if I hung on to it for 30 years or something it wouldn't be a big deal and uh, I do have concerns about how accessible the tobacco is gonna get so that's kind of what that driving force and it's never been an issue so anyway long story short um, do I have any tobaccos now that I'm still really after? Well, I've avoided the craze of McClellan going away or some of those others. I just never wanted to get into a need of buying tobacco that um, I can't get more of, you know. I got a couple awesome samples from Mel Harris, um, Garbage Man Piper, and... Um, I think uh, 
Jason Northwest Piper sent me a sample in what he gave. I haven't had that yet. Um, so I, th I think I'll have tried some of it and I keep, you know, waffling whether, you know, maybe I should get one of the Christmas cheer tins or maybe I should get one of the, the 40th anniversary or whatever they had. But man, it's like $80 for a hundred grams. And I just sitting on a pile of tobacco, is it really worth it? And if I get it and I like it, then I'll just be mad at the other stuff I have. So I keep putting that off. So. In the back of my head, I kept thinking, oh, I want to try some of this. I want to get some of this. And then I keep going, no, you don't. Just hold your guns. So then it comes to pipes. And um, I am happy with the pipes that I have. I, I foresee myself still acquiring pipes, but I don't have like any particular pipe in mind. I know that uh, Charlie Booker Boynton suggested, hey, maybe I should try p lip because of my tongue. And I think that's... A good idea. Um, unfortunately, the types of Peterson pipes that I would like would be nine mil, and I probably have to buy the type that I like um, from Europe because it doesn't seem like the ones that I like are are very popular here with P lip and nine mil. Um, so I might consider trying to acquire something like that, but. It's also kind of like, oh man, what if I do like the P-Lip? <laughs> that I'm going to have to buy more pipes because of that? I don't know. It's kind of like rabbit holes that aren't always super fun to chase. Long ramble. Long story short. I don't have anything on my plate of this is what I'm trying to acquire. I really want this. Um, there was one of my favorites that uh, got discontinued since the two years that I've been smoking. Um, um, John Cotton Smyrna was one of them and um, Hearth and Home Anniversary Flake. I really like that one. Um, <clears throat> I have one tin of the Smyrna um, and I have like 10 or 11 tins of the anniversary flake so I'm kind of like I got stuff but if I saw someone had those like I would snatch those up right away because I just can't get them anymore and they're really good um, I know Chelsea does the pipes that she had acquired some but I know she's in a really busy time in her life right now uh, switching jobs and all that so Hope you're doing well. If you see this, do the pipe. This is a ridiculously long video. I can't even see because I have the camera flipped around. I don't even know if you could see those tins when I held them up. But um, really am um, not looking for something. If I ever go to a pipe show, I will buy a pipe. But it'll just be kind of like uh, I see something. I like it. I'm not searching for anything. I'm trying to avoid that. I don't really want. I'm not a pipe collector. Um, I, uh, I like the pipes that I have and they smoke well and new pipes just take time to get them smoking as good as these pipes smoke. So it's just not appealing to just keep getting new pipes for me. Um, but, um, yeah, hope that answers your question. Hope you guys made it through this video without falling asleep. And, uh, man, just thanks again, Ballad and Piper. All this tobacco. <laughs> I wish I could smoke it right now. One more week, and then I'll be back uh, to the dismay of my doctor. Um, yeah, I don't know. I know it's one of those things where they kind of, like, want to be, are you done? Are you done smoking? So I can put that on your your medical record or do I need to put on your medical record that you're still smoking um, so I don't know how hard to uh, avoid <laughs> those questions but I don't have a uh, insurance that cares right now but maybe in the future I do anywho peace I guess that's all I got you guys all have a wonderful weekend having great weather here uh, we got up into the 80s. Other 
people over in Europe getting snow and stuff, and I'm sitting here being like, I don't know what's going on. This is like June for us in April, so uh, a little bit of rain, all the grass is coming back to life. I'm going to have to mow here soon, so no qualms here. I mean, if the snow's going to go, it might as well be nice, right? So, all right, that's all I got. Bye.